Are we rolling? Oh, we're rolling. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Course Rankings. All courses ranked, or at least the ones we've been playing on for seven, eight years. Jesus. And yeah, see y'all in a year and a half for part two. Today we're ranking all the maps in four categories. The course, no. basically how fun it is to drive in every aspect. The turns, the jumps, the drifts. The item boxes, the coin placements, the drifts. The hazards, the shortcuts, and most importantly, the drifts. The aesthetic, the aesthetic, the aesthetic. Did. The look, mm -hmm. it's graphical prowess, the inspiration, and the art direction. Basically, how much you look at it and go, ooh. The music, which to me is the most important category. If you're driving all these courses over and over, the tunes better be bumping. How well it fits the feel of the course, more importantly, how good the song is on its own. And the X Factor. X -factor. The uniqueness, the extra pizzazz. How much I go, yeah, or Ugh. when it gets picked in online. When I'm playing it, how much I want to say, no, no, this Mario Kart. Basically, how much, uh, how much I like it. This video is obviously my opinion, so if you disagree, then, then I don't know, make your own video for once. Dang, man, you know how hard it is to make these? Each map will get a score out of five in each area, which will determine its overall power score, or piss for short, which will be processed through a complex algorithm which will algebraically and trigonometrically and calculistically determine the best course by way of addition. And oh my god, there are so many maps, we're gonna speed through a lot of these. Mario Kart Stadium. The first course in each game is usually a simple map with nothing to write home about, but this one is quite good. Probably the best first course in Mario Kart history, since it showcases all the game's mechanics in a single lap. Anti-gravity, shortcuts, gliding, tricks, drifts, boosts, it has it all. A nice comfy course that gets picked often since it doesn't have any stupid BS. Water Park. This course is boring. It has one big turn and that's it. Can't even tell you're driving on a big loop-de-loop. -loop. There are rides in the background that you don't really see. Very little personality and ultimately very forgettable. And water sections don't add that much to driving. Sweet Sweet Canyon. It's the Candyland course, except for half the course you are driving through piss. It's supposed to be caramel, but it looks like piss if you drank a ton of soda. Please hydrate. I do like the donut that you boost through at the end though. Thwomp Ruins. Not much to say about it, it's fine. It's a pretty decent course, doesn't have a lot of stupid BS, which is why it gets picked a lot. Dodging Thwomps is pretty easy, I don't know y'all. Overall, Mushroom Cup is pretty weak, but obviously they're not gonna blow their load by putting the best courses right at the start, you know? Mario Circuit, it's the game's logo, a Mobius loop. Now that's branding. A fun course with a lot of good drifting, the most important thing in Mario Kart. I do wish the music was a little bit better, and you spend a lot of time on the bottom of the loop, so it's a surprisingly dark course, but I don't know. It made it into Smash Brothers, that's good enough for me. Toad Harbor, it's the America course, if America was California and New York City and nothing else. So basically how anyone outside of the United States views the United States, which they're not wrong. Pretty good course overall, I like the trolleys. Twisted Mansion. Oh look, it's Kmart brand Loogie Mansion. The course starts promising with humps you can trick off of, a library you can boost through. I love reading, but apparently despite being a plumber, Luigi's backup mansion has a horrible water leak, so half the course is just blue. And the soundtrack sounds like royalty-free stock Halloween music. Shy Guy Falls. It's a pretty high course. You go up a waterfall, you go down a waterfall. That's the course. Waterfalls are cool. Anti-grav sections are kind of cool, but you only get their full effect in the replay mode. Here it feels more like you're driving up a river than a vertical waterfall. Which is fine, you don't want to change up the view or the controls in these sections, but I feel like a little bit more could have been done to really feel the gravity shift, I don't know. You know what really pisses me off? People who wait the full 10 seconds is to pick random every time. HURRY IT UP! Sunshine Airport. I like planes. Driving through an airport is cool, but I wish it had resembled Isle Delfino from Mario Sunshine a little more, rather than a regular airport with a few piñatas. Nope, piñatas in it. If it is the same airport as Isle Delfino, I guess they did some renovations since the events of Mario Sunshine. But it has a clever use of plain stuff, I like it a lot, but I kinda wish the plane at the end was an obstacle you had to avoid. Dolphin Shoals. So they got one of the top saxophone players in all of Japan to record this song, right? And he does this sick saxophone solo in it. So why the frack would you only have the full solo available in the replay mode? The song itself gets a five, but the version you hear while playing is mostly muted steel drums until you emerge from the water at the end of the lap, then it dynamically switches to the sax version, which is a cool effect, but still not the full sax solo. Even on lap three, 
it only plays the sax version, but it's still not the full sax solo. What? I'm just filling time so you can hear more of the sax because it's really good. I appreciate good sex, good sax. The chorus itself, uh, you can do tricks off the eel. That's pretty cool. The rest is whatever. Electrodrome. We hit in the club, but it's a Nintendo game. It's a family-friendly kids bop club. You won't see any lines of coke in the bathroom here. The course itself is pretty good. I like the colors a lot. You'd think the music for the club course would be better though. Also, I was today years old when I realized that it's Electrodrome and not Electrodome. It's a real Berenstain Bear situation. Mount Wario. It was the best course in the game when the original Mario Kart 8 on Wii U came out. Even though it's a snowy mountain, I like how many different scenarios you managed to go through. Like a ton of story, and the music dynamically shifts along with it. You start in the big retracting foreskin copter, then you go through the ice section, a tunnel, across a dam, through a forest, do some slaloming, then ending with a big old ski jump. The only thing Mount Wario is lacking is... Wario. My headcanon is that he's probably making money off of the dam in the ski resort, but he seems like the type of person to plaster his face all over it, and there's barely any sign of him. Instead, they just went, What type of snow course should we make? Yes! Other than that, amazing course, one of the best in all of Mario Kart ever. Roy's our boy! Roy's our boy! Cloud Top Cruise, it's Mario Galaxy, a little bit. I wish it had leaned a little more into that identity, but overall, it's pretty cool. I like how the music sneaks in the Mario Galaxy main theme towards the end, and also shifts into an electric guitar version when you enter the Thunderhead. Bone Dry Ruins. This course makes me bone dry. I hate this course. Desert maps are like getting sand stuck in the butthole. Just absolute ass. The sand ship is cool, the rest is not. It gives the already dying Dry Bones fanbase a bad name. Like the video if you're a true boner. Bowser's Castle. It's okay. Hot take incoming, I think a lot of the Bowser's Castle courses are a little overrated. <laughs> Not bad by any means, just not as good as people say they are. And that's because you spend too much time outside the castle in like, dirt. Hotter take incoming, I think the Wii Bowser's Castle was better than this one. And this is coming from someone who does not like Mario Kart Wii at all. Great song in this one though. Rainbow Road. This is one of the most lackluster rainbow roads in Mario Kart history. And I like space and satellites and spaceships. Come on, it's in the channel name. <coughs> Please subscribe. <coughs> I do like how it has multiple figure eights. Branding. It makes it a pretty challenging course in 200cc. Just slam it on the brakes while drifting so you don't go flying off. Also, swapping between the routes towards the end is pretty fun. I can do this. I can do this. All right, let's go. Let's go. Play the song. The retro courses, Moo Moo Meadows, Wii. Pretty basic course, sunset looks nice, cows are cool, fiddles be fiddling. Gets a good X Factor score purely because I like saying Moo Moo Meadows. Mario Circuit GBA. In the original Mario Kart 8 on Wii U, I spent a summer going for the world record time trial on here. I didn't get it, wasn't even close, but I do think it's one of the most underrated courses. The live music sounds fantastic, I like how the old Nintendo toy the Ultra Hand raises the course in the sloped section. Remember the Ultra Hand? Stop lying, no you don't. Cheap Cheap Beach DS. It's another cozy course. It gets picked often because there's a lack of stupid BS on it. The water section is a shortcut, not much else to say about it. Toad's Turnpike N64. This course is boring. You can fly over the bridge, but you can't use that as a shortcut or anything. So what's the point? I mean, it's not like they had much to go off of from the N64 original, so adding anti-grav on the wall and tricks off the cars is what gets it not a completely horrible score for an otherwise forgettable course. Dry Dry Desert GameCube. They've already remade most of the best Double Dash courses, so for Mario Kart 8 it feels like they went, uh, 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 this one? It's for sure an improvement over the original. You know, it adds nice oasis at the end. And in what can be described as a fastest turtle situation, this is the best desert course in the game. But the desert courses still suck. But they don't suck nearly as bad as Donut Plains 3 Super Nintendo. This is the worst course in the game. The only good thing about it is that it's short. But even even that works against it. There's only two item box spots, the music sucks, and I always have a miserable time on this map. If I could ban three courses in this game, I'd ban Donut Plains three, three times. I hate this course. I'd rather there be 47 courses and this one is just removed. This course is booty butt garbage, and no, it's not because I suck at it. Okay, it's not just because I suck at it. Royal Raceway. One of the prettiest courses with its cherry blossoms, a lot of fun to drive on, a lot of good drifts, just overall a very solid course. I'm sad that it's in the same Grand Prix as Donut Plains 3. 
DK Jungle 3DS, Donkey Kong! Yeah! I'll never be able to play that bass line. What are you talking about, man? It's easy. What the fuck? Wario Stadium DS. I forget this course is in the game. There's nothing really wrong with this course, other than its color scheme of brown, yellow, and purple. Three colors that don't really go well together. It's like the color scheme of a royal toilet. It might have been better as a nighttime course instead of daytime, like how it was in the original. And the music is Walugi Pinball, the course that should have been in here. Sherbert Land GameCube. They added a bottom layer. I've never used it, but I'm sure it's great. Back in my Double Dash days, this was one of my best courses and how I accidentally learned that there were staff time trial ghosts in Double Dash. It just showed up one day while I was doing time trials, I thought I was being haunted. Music Park 3DS, also known as Melody Motorway, a much better name, rare W for Europe, one of if not the best courses from Mario Kart 7, and it gets even more of a visual enhancement in this one. Kinda wish the bass music on Music Park was better, but it gets a 4 because of the sounds that play when you drift on the percussion. Yoshi Valley N64. All these different paths to take. Which path is the fastest route? Who knows? No one knows! We'll never know! Unless you watch the world record time trial, then it's probably that one. Tick Tock Clock DS. A good course with a cool design based off of the Super Mario 64 stage. So why not use the remix of the Tick Tock Clock music from Mario 64? It suits Mario Kart really well and way better than the song they did use. Here, I'll show the map to you with the better Tick Tock music. Ready? Here we go. Tick Tock on the clock, but the water don't stop. No, oh, 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 oh. Piranha Plant Slide 3DS. Visually, a huge improvement on the 3DS one, especially the water section at the end. This map is based off of a level from Super Mario 3D Land 3D, I think? But nobody remembers that game, so who knows? We'll never know. It's a mystery. No one knows. Do you remember that game? Stop lying. No, you don't. Grumble Volcano Wii, one of the worst tracks from the Wii version, and it's not any better here. It's cool how in each lap the course peels away like an orange in an earthquake, but other than that, I don't really like it. Rainbow Road N64, without a doubt the best looking course in the game, and a great song. But like a lot of self-proclaimed alpha males making podcasts, it doesn't measure up, it's way too short. I mean, in Mario Kart 64, it was three laps and just hilariously way too long. I think two laps would have been ideal instead of one. It even ends where it starts, come on. These next courses were DLC in the original Wii U Mario Kart 8, and on average they're going to score higher, especially in the first pack, because they saved the best courses in the game as ones we had to pay extra money for, unlike the 48 DLC courses we're about to get. Let me get this straight, so there's going to be 48 great looking courses, and 48 that are worse. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to have new courses. As you all already know, I'm jacked as fuck and have the balance of a gymnast, so I mostly play Mario Kart 8 while running on the treadmill every day, because running sucks ass and this makes the time pass faster. So I'm looking forward to playing new courses instead of the same ones over and over and over again. But I don't know, I wouldn't mind waiting a little bit longer for them to add some more polish. Also, I remember them saying they had plans for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC as far back as summer 2018, because I made this this video about it, but okay. Yoshi Circuit GameCube. This is the greatest course in Mario Kart history. It's Yoshi Circuit and it's shaped like Yoshi. It doesn't get any better than that. Excellent drifting, excellent Yoshi, excellent waterfall shortcut, excellent Yoshi, excellent sax remix, excellent Yoshi. The only downside is that they always remove the mega secret tunnel shortcut from Double Dash that only real OGs know about. But who cares? Bushy! Excite Bike Arena. The original Excite Bike was one of the first video games I've played my entire life. So I love how this course is based off of everything from the original game. You got the four lanes, the ramp shapes that get randomized each time you drive the map are the exact same shapes from the NES game. It's amazing how they were able to take all two songs from the original Excite Bike that were like five seconds long each and make an entire chiptune remix out of it. The course is mostly a straight line, but there's still a lot of strategy and positioning needed for doing the ramps and jumps correctly. Dragon Driftway. It's a cool eastern themed map where you drive along the back of the dragon from Mario Galaxy. Gobble McCobblepot or whatever his name was seriously needs to see a chiropractor though his spine is all sorts of bent out of shape. But that blown out back is great for some sick drifts. 
Mute City. I miss F-Zero. GX was so hard and so good. And the closest we've come to recapturing that classic high-speed Falcon Punch to the crotch energy is playing this in Big Blue on 200cc. Mute City and Big Blue are probably the best songs in the game that play during an actual race! Perfect score, fives across the board. Wario's Gold Mine Wii. Wholly an improvement on the original, simply because the minecarts speed you up instead of knock you off the course. Not to mention the banjo in this song is going bananas! Rainbow Road Super Nintendo. It looks pretty nice, I like how you can do tricks off the Thwomp Shock waves, but it's pretty short, and on 200cc, you're gonna go flying off the rails like a train on cocaine. This course is a nightmare, also known as being a Rainbow Road. Ice Ice Outpost. It's a great course, you can switch between the paths, great music. Overall, I'd say it's a pretty... Mm, solid course? Get it? Like ice? Do you get it? Do you get it? Solid like ice? Do you get it? It's solid like ice! Yeah! Hyrule Circuit. Great crossover course. I love how they swapped out the coins for rupees. Big Master Sword is there. The music has the Legend of Zelda main theme and Zelda's lullaby and a little bit of Ocarina of Time Hyrule Field theme and a little bit of Twilight Princess Hyrule Field theme all into a racing song and it works. They even managed to integrate Zelda style puzzle solving into a race course by hitting the switches to unlock a shortcut and has triple hairpin turn at the end a plus let's get a round of applause amazing course baby park gamecube this course is basically mario party you can save yourself seven laps by rolling a d12 and that's your place this course is awful and i love it it's pure chaos i love how the music gets faster and wilder and higher pitched with each lap it's fun to have one course in the game be complete wacky fun however not every race should play like this <coughs> The chaos has been watered down from the Double Dash original. That one didn't have guardrails in the middle, so the giant Bowser shell would fly all over the place. Pro tip, in 200cc, you can drift across the grass without losing any speed. Cheese Land, Game Boy Advance. The worst courses in Mario Kart are desert courses and dessert courses, and this one is both. I love cheese. The dog loves cheese. Lactose intolerant people love cheese. Everyone loves cheese. I would not drive my car through cheese. What a waste of cheese. Music is pretty good though, but I hate Cheese Land. Once again, it's a desert map. I can't believe I originally paid extra money for this course. It's terrible. Wild Woods. You go up a tree, then you go down a tree. It's the most, it's fine, map in the game. Music is pretty all right. It's got an oboe? English horn? I don't know, I never learned the difference. Animal Crossing. It has four different seasons. You can use the bumpers and triggers to decide which one. That's pretty cool. The animals on the side are cool. The different song for each season is cool. The fruit giving you boosties is cool. The roost theme at the end is cool. The floating item box balloons can lick my ass. The coins change the bells, but you can't really tell. Other than that, it's pretty bland and basic, just like actual Animal Crossing sometimes. Here's a question. How did Isabel become the mascot for the entire Animal Crossing series? She was in one game when this game came out. How y'all gonna do my man Rover like that? Neo Bowser City 3DS. The road is slippery so it affects your drifting lines. I don't have much else to say about it. Really gotta shift properly and slam on the brakes at 200cc on those multiple consecutive hairpin turns at the end like you're screaming down Mount Akina. Ribbon Road Game Boy Advance. This is the Toy Story course. Was this the inspiration for Mario Kart Home Circuit? I wouldn't know. I didn't play it. Here's the real question. Do we get shrunk down for the race? Or are we still normal size and everything else is giant? In which case, who lives here? Whoever it is must take the most enormous dumps. Super Bell Subway. You've got some awesome accordion up top, and you got the funkiest bass line you ever done heard on bottom. It's a great course because it has trains. I love trains. Everyone should love trains. They're incredible. If you don't like trains, then fuck you. Big Blue. Hot take, I don't like Big Blue. I love Big Blue.
It's a great final course. Whatever they are paying the saxophone player, well, all the musicians, honestly, but especially the saxophone player, it was not enough. He put his whole sax sussy in this song. While obviously not every course should be like this, I do enjoy the big straight line courses instead of laps. I hope the Wii Sports Resort ones get added back into the Booster Pass DLC. And god damn do I miss F-Zero. And there's never gonna be another one. I'm totally not saying this because I'm usually wrong about these things and this will actually make it come back. Nope, definitely not that. We all need to accept that F-Zero is never coming back beyond Mario Kart cameos. Yup, mm-hmm, that's the truth. But yes, this course is very, very good. You can do some cool skips in 200cc. All right, plugging all the pss into the algorithm and calculating and adjusting for the tides and the curvature of the moon, we get, oh look, best course is Yoshi Circuit. I already said earlier in the video, it's gonna be Yoshi Circuit. Why, why are you surprised? If your fave map is rated kind of low, doesn't matter, the game's still great. It's the best Mario Kart game, and if anyone tells you any differently, then they are lying. Yeah, I can't play that shit. Anyways, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to throw your red shell into that subscribe button. Comment below with what your favorite course is, and if it's not Yoshi Circuit, make sure to explain why you're wrong. And, uh, uh that's it, video's over.